Hello, and welcome to this Easter service. The Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church congregation, the session, and I welcome you uh, in this celebration of the resurrection of our Lord. Please join me in our prayer of preparation for worship. Lord Jesus Christ, you revealed yourself to your friends and explained to them the meaning of the scriptures. Help us to recognize the signs of your presence in the new life that surrounds us. Help us to discover anew that life is stronger than death and that love is more powerful than hatred. May your faithful people bear the fruit of this Easter season in a deep faith, constant hope, and enduring love. Amen. Our call to worship echoes an ancient Easter greeting that is at least a thousand years old. It started in the Eastern Orthodox Church uh, of the greeting that one worshiper would say to another when they saw each other on the road to uh, the church on Easter morning. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Our opening hymn will be sung by Sammy Amidon. It is Jesus Christ is risen today. If you have the worship guide, you're invited to sing along.
Hear now the call to confession. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. So trusting in that mercy, let us now confess our sins before God. Let us pray. O oh God, in your Easter rising, you shattered the power of sin and death. Yet we choose to remain in our tombs of doubt and fear, embalmed in apathy and selfishness. Imprisoned in our darkness, we refuse your light. We ignore those who suffer. We remain bound and blind. Saving God, forgive us and change us. Raise us to your life and love. Amen. Let us now confess and silence our personal sins. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Jesus Christ, and Christ did not come to condemn us, but to save us. Christ was born for us, and he lived for us. Christ died for us, and he was raised for us. Christ now lives for us, and reigns for us, and prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ Jesus is part of God's new creation. Behold, our old lives have already passed away, and our new life in Christ has come. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen our scripture for today comes from jeremiah chapter 31 verse 1 through verse 6 so listen now for god's word as it speaks to you at that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness when Israel sought for rest. The Lord appeared to Israel from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It was one of the largest lockdowns in history involving 60 million people. For 76 days, days in the besieged city of Wuhan, China. Streets were empty, shops were closed, people were trapped in their homes, terrified. They were there because during those 76 days, death had the upper hand, but that day is done. On April 8, Wuhan became free. Having flattened the curve, having built hospitals seemingly overnight, having survived at ground zero of this pandemic, Wuhan's quarantine was lifted. 
As the city's clock tower chimed midnight on April 8, thousands gathered in the square, cheering, dancing, releasing balloons. The city put on a light show thanking healthcare workers. Drivers honked, streets filled, shops reopened. Instantly, everything changed. One Wuhan resident said, everyone is so happy. The air is filled with joy. That day is coming for us as well. Right now, things look bleak, but they will get better. And they'll do so as we all do what we're supposed to do to make it so. And while this experience for us is new, people of faith have been in this moment before. Living under siege, having the worst happen, adapting to life on alien terrain, undertaking extreme measures, and finally being saved by God. The nation of Judah was besieged by mighty Babylon, and the worst happened, Jerusalem fell. The Jewish people were carried off into exile. On Babylon's alien terrain, they had to adapt by taking extreme measures, which were given to them by God through the prophet Jeremiah. Build houses, get married, have kids, work hard, and bless Babylon. For as it prospers, you will prosper. In other words, don't shrivel up and die. Invest yourself in life and flourish because God will deliver you. In fact, says God through Jeremiah, here's what that coming deliverance is gonna look like. I will bring you home my love will prevail. I will do that for you. You who are captive now will celebrate. You who weep and worry now will grab a tambourine and dance the dance of the merrymakers in the middle of the street. In fact, you're going to dance all the way home, all the way back to Jerusalem and I am going to help you rebuild the city. Not only that, I will again rebuild you. You will stand tall on that day when all is made right again. Translation, that day of freedom that Wuhan is celebrating, we will celebrate that liberation as well. God will continue to lead us out of death and into life. You who are afraid now will be filled with relief. You will dance in the street and hug your neighbors and shout to the sky, we made it, by God, we made it. By the grace and power of the almighty God, we are alive. Of course, the biggest celebration of all will come when a vaccine is found and we're all inoculated and the coronavirus itself is forever defeated. It will no longer hurt anyone because we'll all have within us the cure that will keep us alive, forever banishing COVID-19 from humanity and from history. Its power will be broken. Its threat will be overturned forever. Essentially, that's what we celebrate on Easter. Only we're celebrating a cure for something far worse than the coronavirus. Easter tells us that the ultimate vaccine has been found. Easter shouts the glad news that we are inoculated with the vaccine that saves us from death. Today we celebrate that death itself has been defeated by the righteous life, the sacrificial death, and the joyous resurrection of our Lord. Death 
will no longer annihilate anyone because God has provided the cure by which we all shall live. Death's reign is over. Its power is broken. Its day is done because Jesus Christ is risen today. The cure is here. Christ's righteousness inoculates us against condemnation. Christ's offering of his body on the cross provides the antibodies that save us. His good life is transfused into our sin-sick souls, providing the way for us to live. His resurrection infuses our mortal lives with his eternal life so that we shall forever live in his Easter kingdom of love and justice and peace. So whatever comes, we're good. We're good because he is good. Whatever befalls us, we shall be made whole by his wholeness, his righteousness, his love, his life. Now that's something to celebrate. That's something to hold on to. We don't have to fear tomorrow because God is already there. God will make a way for us. God will get us through this present trial. So keep the faith. Let's keep doing what we are supposed to do, trusting that a cure will be found. And let's remember that we belong to the ultimate cure, whose way, truth, and life is unstoppable, irresistible, and inevitable. Christ lives, and we shall too. So, put on your dancing shoes. Pick up a tambourine. Pick up your soul. Lift up your eyes and your hopes. God is is coming to save us. God is saving us now. And God's not going to stop until we all stand in the glad dawning of our Savior's Easter light, which shall rise upon us all. Let us pray. Let us unite our hearts in prayer, saying, God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, that as we celebrate Jesus' resurrection, we may renew our faith and strengthen our witness in Jesus' name, so that we are obedient in discipleship, humble in service, and fearless in the face of evil. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the governments of the world and its leaders, especially for our President Donald and our Governor Eric, that they may practice compassion and lead us all out of this pandemic. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For your creation, our planet Earth, that all people may be good stewards of its resources, share its abundance, repair its damage, and protect its beauty. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the poor and the stranger, that they may receive a place of refuge, hope, and hospitality. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the sick, that they may find protection and deliverance from the coronavirus that they may receive healing for their pain and be restored to health and life. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our neighbors, that together we may dwell in harmony. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our enemies, that we may love them and be agents of reconciliation in the name of Jesus. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For all who grieve that they may receive your peace, knowing that their loved ones are alive in the Easter life of our Savior. 
God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For all who cannot believe that they may sense your presence and know your love. For those who have been alienated from the church, that they may find fresh welcome and healing in your embrace and our care. For those who believe, but who have given up, that their hope may be renewed, their faith replenished, and their joy restored. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. O oh God, we ask your grace, mercy, and blessing upon these persons and concerns, which we now silently name before you. Almighty God, we thank you for receiving the prayers we have offered. By the power of your Holy Spirit, use us for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Thine is the Glory. If you're watching the video, it is sung by Jenny Fight Swick. If you have the printout of the worship order, feel free to sing along. Thine is the glory. the charge and the benediction. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Honor all people. Return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. 
Uphold the weak, share and bless the suffering. Honor the Lord your God, protect God's creation, and rejoice always in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.